well, her legacy is, of course, her talent, her, her authenticity, her ability to share, care, and make a difference in the world, especially in the world of cancer, which is something that she, um, she learned to have to live with. I think she showed that you could be all of the above. You know, you could be the full package. You'd be a good wife, you could be a good mother, you'd be an amazing superstar, and you could be um, an icon of philanthropy. Mm -hmm. How did you learn about Olivia passing away? One of my mutual friends called me and told me, and I, um, I was with some of our mutual friends yesterday at a little party I had here, and we were talking about her and talking about how she hadn't been answering our texts, and we all kind of felt that, you know, something was happening. I mean, she's had metastasized cancer. I mean, nobody lives as long as she did. She broke all, you know, all the rules of science. I mean, she just kept going and going and going. And, you know, I, I honestly, I saw her pre-COVID and I thought that was going to be the last time I see her. So she went up and then she went down and up and down. But what she did have constantly, which was really so sad and so hard, was this pain, terrible pain. So, you know, I think they managed her pain and she just kept going and going until, you know, until she, you know, it, it took over. So she really fought. I mean, it was, she was a fighter. She was beyond a fighter. She, she always said she was a thriver. Mm. That was her word. Not a survivor, a thriver. And I think, you know, she taught me and everyone I know so much about living with mm -hmm. and passing with cancer. I mean, we're all gonna go one day, but you cannot go, oh, I'm so terrified, I'm terrified, I'm angry, I'm, I'm gonna isolate, I'm not gonna let anyone know, I'm gonna be all alone and go through it. Or do you do what she did and just be brave and just say, hey, I'm going through something that a lot of people go through mm -hmm. and can't talk about and won't talk about. And I have a voice and I'm gonna help people as best I can. I actually went to her cancer hospital mm. in Melbourne. I mean, she built a hospital for cancer. I mean, she was the most amazing woman, which all she cared about, you know, even in her final years, when I'd go and see her, all she wanted to know is what I was doing. You know, are you happy? What's going on in your life? How are your kids? How's this? How's that? You know, she just, what we were talking about, she thrived and she lived and she appreciated nature and she appreciated close friends and she, she just lived a full and um, sort of spiritual life, really. You know, I, I, the last time I saw her, um, you know, she got the day wrong and we arrived the day before or something and she was in bed. And I was there with my sister. She knew that I'd driven like two hours, two and a half hours to come and find her. And I was with my sisters from England. Bless her, she gets out of bed, somehow manages to get dressed, I don't know how, somehow goes out on a, you know, a, a walker. like walker and, and sits down and talks to us for 20 minutes and, you know, and, and just so loving and so present and so Mm. wonderful and, and, and seemingly really happy to see us. And at the same time, I was looking at her going, I don't think I'm ever going to see you again, you know? Mm. And, um, and she just sat out there, she said, look at those birds, listen to the, look at the hummingbirds, you know? Look at the dogs, look at the horses. It's so beautiful, you know? And she was just kind of blissing out on the fact that she was alive in nature and that she wanted to see what was good in the world. In, in a sense, taking it all in because she knew the end was near. Yeah. These are a couple of pictures that we took as I left when I thought that I may never see her again. She was, um, she was on a walker at that time and as you can see, she's very, very thin. But she came back from this one and then, and then you know, it got bad again. But she... Uh, She always had a smile on her face. She never felt sorry for herself. I've ne I never saw her get angry or um, grumpy or depressed. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm sure she must have, all human beings do, but I've never saw it, ever. I feel like we're here right now, that's, mm. you know, I, I know, she's right up there staring at me, <laughs> going, oh, Jane, don't be ridiculous, you know, stop crying, you silly idiot.